Welcome again. And in the last session, we will talk about some final finalization of the course we have passed in the past eight weeks. We are the effective change manager. Okay, again, the always question, but this time we don't start with Luisa, we start with Wayne. Wayne, what are the images of change managers? And Kenneth is also here, hi Kenneth. Um, nurture. Nurture, yes. Sorry, this is the last session. After one hour, you will have the final exam. David, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, Professor Helling. David, do you know the six images of change managers or not? Yeah, I'd say director, nurture, uh -huh. coach, uh, venture, uh, navigator. Navigator. After navigator, it is um, in the entry level, in the entry lobby of the buildings. You can see who caretaker. Caretaker, yeah. Caretaker, yes. Okay. I hope you have a good final exam with this hard work. I see that you have done for your examination. That's so good. I think only Luisa take the exam and pass the course. Everybody will be fail here. I hope not also. <laughs> okay, it's a joke. No worrying about the final exam. It's very, it's an essay and it's very good and open-minded. It is at the level of MBA, not at the level of undergraduate. Very open-minded, very open, not open book. It is related to your literacy about the management also, but uh, you can have a lot of your opinion because after this course, you should be, you should be, maybe you are now just now, but you should be after passing this course as MBA students and after graduation, you should be a good and effective leaders, something more than managers. Because of that, our questions are very open. We need your mind, your brain, not your literacy. Literacy is internet, you can find anything. You are not a library. You are a man and a thinker, man. Okay. Uh, we will talk about the change managers. Who are they? Change emerging from the middle or below. It's very important and very hazardous. Change manager, what kind of role is this? Change management competencies, core competencies, political skill and the change manager. And do you want to be a change manager? Who want to be a change manager in the future here? I love, I love it, David. Anybody else? Who wants to be a change manager? Kenneth, Chinea, Wayne, our newest student, Eric, and final Luisa. Only David? Have a good job, David. Oh, can I? Only two competitors, Kenneth and David. Nobody wants to be a change manager here because of loss of courage. Okay, it's not related to you. It's related to your future and position, a managerial position. I think a lot of you will be change manager, selective or mandatory. It is not important. You should be a change manager if you want to be an ordinary manager, an ordinary manager, not extra manager. As an ordinary manager, you will be a change manager, but you can choose it or no, it will be your choice. The change manager is a term that has broad application to people with a diverse range of involvement in organizational change processes. Because of that, you will be, definitely you will be a change manager. Categorization of change manager uh, is based upon the nature of the role they accept in managing the change. The kinds of people they want to manage in their life, in their organization, in their societies and communities, and 
final, uh, finally, we can talk about the uh, categorization of change manager and change management based upon the capabilities they need to have the skills. What is the difference between education and training? My young brains, please answer me. What is the differences between education and training? Is there any difference between education and training or not? Am I now educating or training or instructing or teaching? What is the difference between education and training? Eric, do you want to say something? Uh, I mean, you're definitely teaching and educating us right now. And what about the chain? Uh, what about the uh, training and education? I think a training is probably something that um you know you have a goal of you know just mm -hmm. acquiring a specific skill. Aha, uh -huh, that's good. Thank you. The keyword for training is skills, but the keyword for education is information, knowledge. Education should be and can be very theoretical, very knowledgeable, but training is for applicable, based upon the practical skills, as Eric says. So you don't say teaching skills, skill teaching, skill learning, skill education. You say skill training. For example, we say as a one of the soft skills, you should have some assertiveness training to train, to be trained, how to assert yourself instead of aggression. You should know how to assert yourself for your rights very gently without any aggression, active aggression as violence or passive aggression. For example, as some say something behind people that they don't know anything about you have said about them. It is gossip. It is gossip is a kind of passive aggression. You destroy somebody, you destroy some prestige, some credit, but don't harm him or her physically. It is not called aggression. It is called passive aggression. Okay. Because of the capability we want to hear, I ask the question, the difference about the differences between education and training. The other names of change manager. First, product champions. Senior manager with considerable power and prestige. Someone who has the power and prestige is sometimes called Charismatic. Charismatic is someone who has power and prestige, power and credit. Prestige is the social credit. When you have a good name, you have a good reputation, you have a good high level behavior, high level thinking style, high level emotional regulation and high level acting in your society, in your family, in your organization, you are so prestigious. High level of thinking, high level of feeling and high level of acting. These are the three elements, three components of your mind, your thought, your emotions, and your behavior. These are the elements of the psyche, as we call it psychology, the science of mind. These, are, these components are your thinking styles, your emotional styles, feeling styles, and your behavioral style, your actions. And after that, this change champions. At first, it is uh, concentrated in product in an organization who is a change manager, someone who champions about the products. And after that, it is about the change champions, those who damn the bureaucratic and take it unto themselves to maneuver the project through the system. How do you think about the chaotic people? Are they good or not? Do you consider Donald Trump a chaotic president or not? If yes, why? If no, again, why? Not extraordinary, not out of the ordinary, chaotic. Chaotic this is something in against the ordinary orders, present orders of a society, of a company, of an organization. For example, Mr. Trump is a, is an, a chaotic president or not? If say yes, why? If say no, again, why? I 
I need your brain, not your knowledge. I think Everybody he is. can have a good knowledge. Okay, Wayne, say something. I think he is pretty um, chaotic in a sense where I remember there are times I can't like pinpoint to one example, but there will be like headlines changing every 10 minutes because uh -huh. he will tweet something and then the White House says something else and then another person comes on the interview says something else. I think it was like about uh, the deal with China, the trade deal. Uh, there, um, the Secretary of Commerce came on and said, this is a done deal or uh, the negotiation is uh, done or they're not going to talk to them anymore and then he had to like change his uh, methods to correct himself there, there, there's been a lot of like those back and forth and foot flops oh so like. you think instead of okay i think we can call it unstable yeah <clears throat> someone who was not stable and is it good or bad as a manager president to be a president of a one country especially one great country, one powerful country like America is a type of higher level leadership, something more, 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 more than an ordinary management. Do you think, can we have an unstable policies for managing or leading such a country or not? Clearly, do you know him as a manager, management student, as a leadership student, do you know this type of president, this personality, a successful president or not? If you can, you say yes, why? If you say no, again, why? I need your brain, not your knowledge. Market needs your brain, not your knowledge. Young brains. Anybody? Sorry, what was the question, Professor? The question is that, if it do you think this type of leadership, uh -huh. for example, like Donald Trump, like there is an example, yeah. a chaotic and unstable, and sometimes very flexible. When you, uh, when you call it unstable, it is not a good word. But sometimes we call it very flexible management. Is it efficient and sufficient for a country like America or not? We should have some rigid discipline for having a good leadership or sometimes a bad leadership. Do you like this type of leadership? You can call it flexible, you can call it chaotic, you can call it ping pong effect, you can call it, for example, uh, flexible and unstable. Every word you can use it, yes, it's good. But finally, how do you think about this type of flexible, unstable, chaotic, ping pong effect leadership? Is it good for a country, for an organization or not? Do you like to be in the uh, in future, to, to be a manager like this person or not? No, I don't like it. Like the manager with this profile that you described, Mm -hmm. I think that's not good for any kind of organization, you know, Why? because once there's no like consistency, like people can rely on it, you know, for example, in each decision, it's going to be like a different, I don't know, uh, different source of information that he's going to use. I don't know. It's, it's going to be, so it's going to be super unstable, as you mentioned. So I don't think that's going to be something that someone can rely on and have a, like a long-term you know, uh, really. in that term, you say any manager should have an unflexible personality, unflexible uh, discipline for management or not. What is the uh, place of flexibility in management? Is it good? Is it bad? It is relatively good, sometimes good, sometimes bad. What is the meaning of flexibility in management? Um, professor. I think the thing is you're, you're combining um, um, flexibility and chaotic. I think they're two different analogies. Talk about it. Yes, yes. I, I, combine I, it don't, intentionally. I don't think that um, um, a chaotic person is necessarily an unflexible uh, or a flexible person. A chaotic person is someone that um, doesn't 
that has a mind of his own and doesn't listen to other people, doesn't understand the concept of having like a team. So, which is what um, Wayne was trying, I think it was Wayne that was trying to narrate that. So I think it was kind of what he was trying to say. Now, in, uh, there's some industries where being um, flexible is, is important, like the IT industry where That's good. Um, um, technology is changing every day and we, you have to use um, the agile system to implement new um, scope of business and all of that. So you can't have one rigid um, innovation and go through with that to the end is definitely going to change over time. So uh -huh. in that case, you need a flexible leader, someone that could wake up today and say, no, we're not going to do this anymore. We have to change it. And everyone in that organization is also um, thoughts that you can wake up tomorrow. What are, the, what are the criteria for diagnosing that this is the time of flexibility or not? This is not the time of flexibility. What are the criteria? As a manager, how do you find that, yes, it is the time of flexibility? No, it is the time of stability. How do you find it as a manager in the future or just now? It is the main question. I agree with you that chaotic thinking is something different. It is anarchistic, I know. But flexibility is that in a the limited, but in this limited, yes, we are flexible. What are the criteria? What are the index you can use for diagnosing that? Is it the time of flexibility for changing the manner, for changing the procedure, for changing methodology or something more than this or not? It is the time of consistency. Uh, I think I think when you um, do something over and over again and you're not getting the expected feedback, it's, it's exactly the time for change and flexibility. You have to start trying different strat strategies to see a better outcome. So if if you're trying to um, if you're trying to aim for a better or for growth or for change in an organization and you're not achieving that, then you have to keep looking for different strategies to achieve your aim. But when yeah. things are stable, when you've uh, when you've come to a place where um, you you're on a level ground and you want to like implement what you've come um, you've agreed on, then you can um, you know have a level ground. You don't need to change anything. You need to be stable. Uh, so it depends on the point where the, uh, the organization is in. I just like want to say that you can still be like consistent and flexible at the same time. Because yes. once you yeah, so once you're consistent, you know you have like a as a good, as an organization, we have a core values, and you use that as the principle and uh, use as a direction as a guideline. You know you can be flexible on the terms, but at the same time you're consistent because you're taking them on consideration. You know, for yes, taking a decision that. So which is sometimes, I believe, which is called conceptual framework and theoretical framework. When you have a conceptual framework, you can use it as a framework for conceptualization of yeah. your materials, of your life, of your business, of your family, of your country, of your religion, everything. You have a conceptualization framework. But within this framework, it is flexible. It is flexible. For example, as human being, you have some naturalistic features. You walk on two feet, not on, for example, four foot, okay. But as a human being, you have some restrictions, limitations, and you have a lot of freedom to act. This is the old discussion about the limitations between freedom and limitation. Thank you for joining the discussion. Technological entrepreneur, sponsor, senior manager, and executive champion, power broker. Uh, please uh, read and study about this phrase. It is not very old phrase, power broker, but it's a very good phrase to study about it. It has some brilliant notes in the internet about the roles of power broker in different aspects of life, also in the managerial aspects of your life as a manager. And change generator, change implementers, and change adopters. Four roles that change managers can have. The catalyst, the solution giver, the process helper, and the resource linker. These are the four roles that change managers can have. The catalyst, who encourages dissatisfaction with the status quo. The solution giver, who offers suggestion for improvement. 
for process helper who assists others, and the resource linker who bring together people, funding, and knowledge. Another question. We have two approach to solve the problems. At first, it is problem-focused approach. Second one is solution-focused approach. What are the differences between problem-focused approach to solve the problems or solution-focused approach to solve the problems? Two approaches, problem-focused approach and solution-focused approach. I think it is, if you, the problem-focused approach, it is something that it can be fixed and not be repeated again, you know? For example, it is something that it's unusual, unusual. And the solution approach, it is something that it is unexpected. It's not up to you what is happening. And you have to focus on the solution more than the problem because the problem, uh, problem, some of the problems, some external problems, something like this, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like. Yeah, other views? The difference between solution-focused approach and problem-focused approach. You are a manager. If you have a solution-focused approach, how do you think about the problems of your organization? Or if you have problem-focused approach, how do you think about the problems of your organization? Something, think about something like timelines, retrograde and retrograde. Do you know the meaning of retrograde and retrograde? Retrospective and retrospective. Retro is is mean back. Entre is mean for what? Retro is great or retro is big, something who think about the causes of events. It is retrograde. But retrograde think about the outcomes of the events. Retrograde is thinking about the history of everything. But retrograde think about the destiny of everything. So solution focus is retrograde. It is about the future. It is about the what can we do just now for solving a problem? But problem focus say why we have such a problem. What are the causes of this problem? What are the roots of this problem? So in problem focus orientation, problem focus approach, our focus is on definition of the problem. But in solution focus approach, our focal point is on finding some solutions for our problems, regardless of the causes, regardless of the etiology, regardless of uh, regardless to the roots of the problem. So now, with this definition of differences between solution focus approach orientation or approach and uh, problem focused approach or orientation, how do you think about yourself? At first, Eric. Eric, do you think? As a manager, you are a solution-focused manager or no, a problem-focused manager. With these definition and these differences, I talk about it. Um, or preference. Yes, I know we are combination, different situation. We have different approach. Yes, I know. But about the preference, do you like more to think about the roots of the problem or no, to find a solution? You think, if we can solve it, there is no, no important how about the roots. Or no, you think, yes, we can solve it. If you cannot find the roots, it will repeat again and again and again. How do you think? Well, I think in the long run, uh, the roots, like trying to find the roots is going to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. But also it's going to cost a lot more, let's just say, resource and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say in the short round is probably the, the other way around. I just say it's easier to find a problem, to spot a problem and then just solve it right, right off the bat. But, you know, track all the way, you know, from scratch, that's going to just, you know, take a lot more efforts. But so yeah, you're that just... in the history. So you're focused in the history, not about the destiny, in the roots of you focus on the roots of the problem. Yeah, I mean, if I were the manager, I would probably do both. But like, if I had to pick one side, I would probably, like I said, like it just, there is no like right or wrong. You know, I would probably pick like problem solving, like try to spot a problem first and get it done. Uh-huh. 
But yeah, okay. that's that just my thoughts. So. Teresa, what about you? Are you a solution focused manager or no problem focused manager? I think I would go with the solution because it goes into the future and it's not really important what happened in the past, but it's important where you're going to. And so I would rather focus my resources on going where I want to go instead of um, wasting my resources on something that already happened. Do you know what is the difference between European style management and American style management in this approach? I would say American just do it and go forwards and don't really, I mean, they know about the risk, but they just do it. And then when something happens, they just pay the money if like they have to pay like some kind of penalty fee. And Europeans, I think, are usually more um, descriptive. Yeah, on the safer side and so. Yeah. yeah. With this approach, European management are very descriptive, very retrograde, very uh, problem focused. They love to know the roots of their problems. But American style management, American management style is very ultra-grade solution focus. Yeah, you can nothing see it. Nothing is better, nothing is worse. There are different. Yeah, for example, where you can see it well is with genetically modified food. Mm -hmm. Over here, um, they just do it. And although we don't know about the long-term risks, and in Europe, it's like, no, we still got to do like these studies to find out if it's bad for us or not. I'm surprised that you are European, but your mind is so American. <laughs> you think that, yes, I go for, especially in Germany, I know they are very, very, very careful about the decisions. One of the greatest nation all around the world about the accuracy of decisions are German people. I'm surprised that you think, yes, I go for what like American people. And Wayne, how do you think? Are you problem solver manager or, or uh, solution focused manager? Um, more problem solving, uh, definitely focus more on the root of the issue. Okay, maybe I'm the German here. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I, I, I like hearing like some of the pain points of the current process and trying to yeah. improve from that. Do you see any cultural orientation to your approach of management? Can you find it in your family roots, in your cultural roots? For example, Asian people, Eastern people, Western people, European people, American, maybe sometimes original African people, different approach. Can you find it? Can you see it just in our session just now? For example, different parts of Asia, Far East Oriental people, they are very, very, very concentrated on the roots. That uh, about the um, Arabic countries, my country also Iran, we are half and half. But a leader preference now these days in these decades a leader preference to American style to solve the problems. Also, you can find in the European that they are very descriptive, very, very descriptive, explanatory. They want to find, as Luisa said, they want to find the roots and after that decision-making, sometimes it is very good, but in critical period, in urgent period, it is not so good because you should have a good action. You should have an action, you should have a decision. Sometimes it is not the best decision, yes. But you should have sometimes a decision. Having a bad decision sometimes is better than having no decision, especially in critical periods. Thank you for discussion. It was very good. And souls of fire. It's from a Swedish word, Elt Jaya, as liar. I don't know how we. Lisa, do you know how we can call it or not? Do you know the pronunciation? It's Jaila, Jaila, I don't know. Meaning driving while burning enthusiasm. 
Do you know anything about the pronunciation of this word, Risa? I would say Elciala, but I also don't speak Swedish. <laughs> Maybe. Driving by burning enthusiasm, burning desire. Please study about a philosopher of success, so-called John Paul Mayer. John Paul Mayer. He was dead about 20 years ago. It was one of my first thinking resources when I was 20. I also, I was in my country and I never met this gentleman face to face. It is about 20 hours by airplane from America to my country and other side of the world and inside. But I had, uh, I had studied uh, sometimes about his thinking. One of their thing I learned from John Paul Mayer was in successful plan. You can find it as a personal successful plan in internet, but by John Paul Mayer or Paul Mayer. It is um, burning desire is the greatest motivator for every human action. Burning desire is the greatest motivator for every human action. It's something like burning love, burning desire, burning approach, burning discipline, and sometimes burning character, burning personality. You see here, driving by burning enthusiasm. A management patriarchs who originate ideas versus evangelists who implement them. Theoretical people and practical people. Five roles in innovation and change. We are uh, discussing from different aspects of change manager in the last session. Sparks, sponsors, shapers, sounding boards, and specialists. Nothing that those who generate Isaac can come from any level in an organization. Companies secret change managers. In every country, every society, every community, every family even, sometimes you can find some silent leaders. They are leaders, but they are not very loud leaders, very talkative leaders very affluent leaders. They are covert leaders, not overt leaders. They are secret change managers. A bottom up approach that encourages the positive deviance in the organizations. These are people who are already doing things differently and better. The key is to engage the members of community you want to change in the process of discovery, making them the evangelist of their own conversion experience. One of the greatest things, I love coaching in every aspect of life. And after about 15 years of psychotherapy and counseling, I switched my field from psychotherapy to coaching. One of the things which is very important and very attractive in coaching is about going forward, concentrating, on your assets, present assets, not about the future. It is about the strengths, human strengths, about the human optimal functioning, about the optimal performance. And these are not the phrases, these are not the words. These are very, very real in every aspects of coaching. Highly recommended, highly recommended to all of you to pass at least an executive coaching course, at least. For example, the Stanford has a very good executive coaching only for five or six days. It is in person. Or Harvard or other uh, centers or the other universities. Highly recommended for every graduated in management and business and leadership after graduation, passing a course of coaching. In addition, complementary coaching for executive coaching, for sales coaching, for performance coaching, even for life coaching, which is the first ranking is life coaching. Why? Because without life coaching, you cannot do anything for yourself. Every type of coaching is self-coaching. Every type of management is self-management. And after that, 
we can see the names, catalyst, change adopter, change champion, change generator, change implementer, evangelist, executive champion, patriarch, positive deviant, process helper, product champion, resource linker, shaper, solution giver, souls of fire, sounding board, spark, specialist, sponsor, and technological entrepreneur. The typology of four kinds of media management contributions to organizational innovation, change, and strategy. One, the typology of character who gathering and synthesizing information at first. They are analyzer, they are coordinator, justifying and championing alternatives. These are at the images or supporter or nurturer or sometimes interpreter. Facilitating adaptability by relaxing rules and buying times. They are caretaker. And translating goals into action and selling initiated to staff. They are directors and coach. Your thinking will be your Kings, things, maybe things, maybe uh, external things. In the process of coaching, in the process of management, in the process of leadership, you can see your thoughts, your ideas in real world. It is the process of leadership, process of management, process of creation. Media manager roles, coordinating, mediating, interpreting, and negotiate. It is difficult to isolate. I think you, yes, in the MBA, you have a course so-called uh, conflict management and negotiation processes. Have you passed this course or not? Have you taken this course or not? It is negotiation process. It is negotiation, pro conflict management and negotiation processes. It is one of the greatest courses you will take in the MBA course. It, it is very useful for your daily personal life, not only for your managerial life. It is difficult to isolate an individual's contribution because it is the pattern of influence of middle managers that affects organizational change and outcomes. It is not very bad situation, but it is very hard situation. As a higher ranking, as an up manager, upper manager, it is very hard for you to say to your legal managers or media managers to do the things you want and they sometimes they don't obey you in the process of creating change in your organization, especially when in addition to be a manager, you are the owner, you are the stakeholder, you are the shareholder. It is very difficult that you think in the higher level of thinking about the management, about the goals of your organization and a media manager or a lower manager can destroy everything. So in implementation phase of your goals, in the implementation phase of your creation, uh, creating the changes, media managers are very important. Why? Because a lot of practices are done in the level, at the level of media management. So take care about your media managers in your organizations. The entrepreneurial media manager, the condition that can discourage the entrepreneurial media manager from taking risk and in innovating are systems and policies that encourage consistent, safe, conservative behavior. Complex approval cycles with elaborate the the documentation. Controls that encourage micromanagement and top-down management and lack of delegated authority. These are the conditions that discourage this management from taking risk and innovating. I have another question. What is the role of conserv to be conservative? What is the importance of to be conservative, conservative for a manager? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it sometimes good, sometimes efficient, sometimes inefficient? How do you think about yourself? David, are you a conservative manager? Do you know yourself as a conservative, as a cautious manager or not? 
Yeah, I'd consider myself a conservative. Mm -hmm. Is it profitable for you? Is it efficient for your organization, for your job? I think according to my principles and values, I think it is, uh, it is you know, correct. And that's why I think it is, I tend to towards to be conservative, conservative. I got it. Now, at the same time, I'm flexible. So flexible. Also, the other time, other parts, other hands of conservative is not flexible or a hardy. It is conservative or risky. Sometimes people are conservative. Sometimes people are not conservative. They are risky, risk takers, high risk takers. What is the location? What is the value of risk taking in organizational development and organizational change management? Is there, can you consider any location, any value for the risk taking in management of the changes needed to be done in an organization or not? What is the location of risk taker manager? Is it good? Is it bad? As you know, in one session, Luisa talked about the game theory and about the risk study, the mathematical approach to risk study. It is a science, it's a mathematical rigid science empirical science, not theoretical. It is very, very empirical science about the game theory, about the risk study and studying the risk ability of every decision you want to make in your life, in your organization, your community and other parts of your life. What is the value of risk taking in change management? Is it good or not? You should be a conservative manager as a change manager, how do you think? Anybody else? No idea? I think most of the time you have to be a risk taker if you want to do changes because you, it's, it can be very difficult to foresee if it's how good it is. Of course, mm -hmm. there are measurements or you can use game theory to decide uh, what's, what's most likely going to happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think overall it's better to be a risk taker. Is risk taking necessary for change management or not? Risk taking is outcome of change manager. If we need some changes in our organization because of this need, we should have we should take some risks or not. If you want to have some risk, if you want to take some risk, after that, you should change something, which is which is cause and which is effect between change, need to change, and risk taking. Is there any opinion about it? Is risk taking the cause of need to change or not? Is need to change an organization in your life the cause of risk taking? Which is first, which is second? Is there any cause and effect relationship, is it causality effect between them or not? Causality, causal relationship or not? I think at first I take the risk and then I see the change. I don't make the change and then I start measuring the risk. Yes, it is the measurement of risk. But why do you measure the risk? At first you think, yes, we need to create some changes in our organization and after that we think, Yes, because of need to change, we should take some risks or not. You say we should have some risk for improvement of our organization. It is not absolutely a need to change. We want to improve our life. We want to develop in our life, in our managerial life, love life, family life, social life. And after that, because of need to change, yes, we should take it the risk. Also, there are different approach to this problem and there is no final absolute answer. Sometimes need to change, create the need to take risks. Ordinary, it is like this because everybody wants to be in a safe zone, in a comfort zone. Nobody wants uh, voluntarily take some risks because risk is risky, it's dangerous, it's hazardous. So at first it is assumed that a natural human being, a healthy human being, and ordinary people don't want, don't like 
to take risk, except the need to change. And what are the criteria of need to change? One of the basic criteria, basic assumptions behind the need to change is to be boring with the present and current course of development in your life. It is, if your life is very boring, it is one of the greatest causes of need to change. And after that, you should take some risks. Despite the traditional characterization as change resistance, middle managers often play a key role in bringing about organizational change. Quiet leaders, tempered radicals, idea practitioners, and stills innovators disrupt even to some of the names given to people who may not have a senior or even middle management role, but who through their ingenuity and respectiveness to new ideas, networking, risk-taking, and political skills can be driving forces behind organizational change. At first, we want to talk about the quiet leaders or tempered radicals. The quiet change managers or tempered radicals do not belong to the top management group and they might not have medial management roles either. They are, however, instrumental in challenging the pervading culture, initiating and driving change by leveraging small wins and engaging others. You know that in some parts of business, for example, stock market, one of the first motives for trading in a stock market, it is called quick win. Quick win is very important. For example, after two weeks, after one week, you gain some money. It is your quick win. It is very rapid motive for continuing your trading. It is something like that. A quiet leader, a tempered radical, is not at all a manager, not top manager, not lower manager, not medium manager. He or she is not a manager. But very, very important to creating a change and to performing a change and to installing a change and to say change is done, over, it's good. It's a norm of organization. We talked about it previous session. That when you can say the change is over, then after that, you should not see the change as a state. It is a normal situation of an organization. In that situation, yes, it is not a change. It is a normal situation, a normal organization. Before that, it is a changing situation. We are trying to installing the changing situation in the context and the form and the content of the organization. They drive change and improvement effectively by being patient, buying themselves time, managing the political capital and bending the rules. It is about the quiet leaders. Going into sales mode, you know, waiting under the radar. This is especially appropriate, appropriate where there are many gatekeepers to navigate when bureaucratic processes will slow, will sh slow things down. It is something like uh, change resistance in an organization. Some formal barriers, some formal norms of an organization. They are the gatekeepers. They are the resistant to, the, to creating change in an organization. Where the risks of failure are low and with the reputation of damage from being discovered will be minimal. The challenger for steel innovators are one, to find the sponsors and allies. These are likely to be colleagues at the same level in the organization, or one or two grades higher. They may not have top executive power, but they are more numerous and are easier to access. They are more likely to understand the context for the idea, and they can help to get the project started. Two, to generate proof of concept, evidence that the idea works and will generate real benefits. This involves conducting small scale experiments, building a prototype, demonstrating viability, and making it work. The sales innovator must have access to funding and other resources to keep the project running. Big, borrow, barter, and scavenge is the advice here. And third is the cinema needs steel 
branding or a cover story in order to work on the project without attracting attention. It is very, very important. In this position of creating change, attracting attention is very, very hazardous. Why? Because after attracting attention, there will, you will have a lot of change resistance in front of you. You will face a lot of change resistance in your company, your organization, your colleagues, and your cooperatives, and other people around you. This means giving credible answers when asked about how their time is being spent and being careful with the choice of language, avoiding the word project, for example. You should show your project, you should show your change management system very, very, very slow, very out of any hazard, any risk, any danger. It is very, you show that there's nothing. I can do something different for myself, for my little parts of my life. You cannot, you are not allowed to show your project as a huge project, as a project even. It is say, you should have a very, very, very conservative in language. Avoiding the word, for example, like project is a very simple word in the manage management. But when you are going to steal moves, you should avoid every big war and you should go under the radar. Nobody can see you as a change manager. The idea as practitioners are other and other word that we can use for change manager. They bring new management ideas into an organization. They are idea practitioners. Here's an informal, um, informal word phrase here. It is so-called idea sex. Idea sex is mean that when you have a major framework in your mind and you interpret other things in your life, in your organization and combine other concepts with this major conceptual framework in your mind, the outcome, this process is idea sex. The sex between the present, it is sex is mean combination. Sex between your present frame of uh, frame of reference, your conceptual framework and other concepts, other meanings. It is something like sex together. And we have an idea baby. Idea baby is called for the new uh, idea that which is gained from this combination. Also, it is not formal, but in informal literature of management, it is called idea sex. Idea six is very, very important in your mind. At first, you should have a conceptual framework, it's something that you think, yes, it is correct. And I can use it for interpreting all aspects of my life. Other meanings, other concepts will, uh, will be combined with this, your major, your referral system, your referral framework, and the consequence is idea baby. They bring new, it is called ideas practitioners. These are called. Uh, they bring new management ideas into an organization. There are a diverse and scattered group, but with common ways of working that seem to work in four stages: scooting a stage, packaging a stage, advocating a stage, and implementing a stage. Scooting a stage, they read a lot. Leaders are leaders are. Now in advertisement about the leadership, they say leaders are, leaders are readers. Leaders are readers. They read a lot. If you cannot read a lot, sorry. In the modern and postmodern leadership, you are out of the gate. You are not in the circle of leadership especially in postmodern leadership. Leaders are readers. How many books have you read? Um, not your college, not your academic books. How many books have you studied since the, during the last year? Luisa. One, two, three, four, yeah. 10. This year. Quite a yeah. bit more because I have more time. 
Yeah. In the last year, how many books? Nothing except of your academic books? No, a few, but yeah, not too many. Eric, nothing? Unfortunately, zero. Yeah, thank you. Wayne, <laughs> nothing? I think I read about, about one a month at least so far. Yes, thank you. David, how many books in the last year, except of your academic books? Last year, I'd say three, one audio book. One, it's misbehaving. And the audio book, it's an intelligent investor. And there's another book in Portuguese, yeah. Yes. Okay. It's and also, you read a book about Elon Musk. Oh, but that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And Kenneth and Chineye and Salmodin, I know you are here or not. I cannot see you. Okay. Leaders are readers. They read a lot. Attend conference. Explore. Kenneth, have you read? Have you studied any book in the last year except of your academic books? Nothing? Uh, one. Yeah. One. What was that book? I, I can't even remember the name of it right now. Thank you. So interesting book that you cannot remember the title of the book. It's great. They read a lot, attend conference, explore interdisciplinary perspectives, and look to other fields for ideas. You don't live in a cave. And you are not a cave keeper. You are living in a modern world, in a postmodern world, and you want to be a leader, a manager. If you cannot read, if you cannot do conference, if you are not a persistence learner, you should go out of the box of leaderships. Every type of leadership, every aspect of leadership. It is mandatory. It is not extra point. It is the main point for being at the top level of management. Packaging the state. They translate and tailor the ideas for a wider audience and express ideas in terms of key issues, innovations, efficiency, and effectiveness. These are the key issues of every idea you want to give to your community that interest senior management and advocating a stage. They sell, run, run marketing campaigns, find early adopters, persuade other managers. And final stage is implementing the stage. They make things happen, manage change, roll it out from boardroom to frontline. In the terms of personality, um, what type of personality do you give that the idea practitioners should have? With this definition of idea practitioner, what type of personality traits you think you guess that these people should have? You see that someone who wants to read a lot and transmitted to the key issues of innovation, efficiency and effectiveness and a booking stage, marketing campaign, early adopters, and finally manage role, roll it out from boardroom to frontline and everything. Combination between having tough theories about the life, about the management, about the leaders, about the organization and practical aspects. And you can uh, convert this idea, this th theory, to an action. It is called idea practitioners. In the theoretical parts, they are idea, they have ideas. In the practical parts, they are practitioners. A very complete combination of different aspects. What types of personality features do you think they should have? Any guess about it or not? Ideas practitioners tend to be intelligent, optimistic, passionate about the idea, intellectually restless, mild-mannered, not fanatical, and self-confident. It is very, very important to be open-minded, 
if you want to be an ideal practitioner, open-minded is the first thing you need. They also tend to be boundary spanners with expensive personal networks. If ideal practitioners are not recognized and supported, they will leave. They want to create and to change and to convert their idea to action. If they are not accepted, they go out, they leave and go to some, somewhere else to find their follower, to find their co-workers. They must be allowed to pursue ideas and they need to be rewarded with recognition and intellectual stimulation as well as money. It is one of the greatest moneymaker jobs in the world, in the modern world, especially in these two decades, in the past two decades. To be an idea practitioner is a very, very, very high moneymaker job because it's very complicated. It needs, in addition to literacy, to knowledge, to technology, to application, to self-management. In addition, all of these, it needs a special character, a special personality, as you see here. But we can work on our character. We can work on our uh, personality traits. Anyone can be innovative by learning the five habits. If you are not innovative and you want to be you should create yourself these five habits. One, associative, making connections. Two, questioning, challenging assumptions. Three, observing, watching for new ways of doing things. Four, experimenting and also experiencing, testing new ideas. And five, networking, attending conferences and social events. It is very important. How many workshop, workshops do you attend in one year? Not only as a student, as a manager. How many workshops? One workshop per year, two webinars, three conferences, four free lectures, or not only working, TV, eating, sleeping, and other things. You should change your lifestyle if you want to change your money-making style at first, financial style. You should change your lifestyle, thinking style, feeling style, acting style. If you cannot change your lifestyle, you cannot change anything. Yes, you may be a better leader, a better manager, and a better, for example, higher money maker from $100,000 per year to at the maximum rate, 200,000 years per year. After that, it is related to your personality, to your character. So work on yourself. It is the first advice Oprah Winfrey said everyone, work on yourself. Change emerging from the middle. Amplification, an organization most valuable change managers may not be visible and may not be those who have been formally appointed to change management roles. Managers should try to find the hidden influencers as the latter can have a significant effect on the extent to be people buy into a proposed change. Okay. Other parts is not so important. And do you want to be a change manager, career moves, responsibility positioning, the politics, your strengths, your gaps, and your actions? Okay, you can have 10 minutes break. And after that, come to the session again for your final exam for one hour, okay? After 10 minutes, I will visit you again here.
I'm waiting for other students to give you the password of final exam. I have a question. It says at least uh, write at least three paragraphs and don't write more than three paragraphs. Uh, so what's the right thing to do? Do you want to do it at the next times on the other days? No, so in the description of the final exam, it says write more than, write at least three paragraphs. Yeah. And it also says don't write more than three paragraphs. Yeah, because when it is very uh, long, it's very boring to read. I need your major concepts, no extra words, no, only the core concept of the answers. You are okay. the master degree students, yeah. But always three paragraphs? No, at the maximum rate is three paragraphs. Okay. And how many questions do we have to select? You should, you cannot select, you have four questions. Take a minute, I check it again. You have four questions for 200 scores. Each question has 15 scores, 15 grades, 15 points. Okay, and we answer every question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So let me check it. Okay. Check your exam. Your password is hard work. Check it, is there any problem or not? After starting, you have one hour time for answering four questions, a say. Is it okay? Yeah, it worked. <clears throat> okay. Professor, I'm having some trouble to push the password to log in. Oh, actually, to do the to unlock the. Why? Thing. Why? I don't know. Does it work for everybody? Yeah, it is the same for everybody, right? 
I think you have to just retype it again. It also didn't work for me the first time. Yeah, I did it, but then I opened again the week eight and it's saying it in progress. But I put the password again and it's saying it's incorrect. I don't know what's the problem. It's a technical problem. And you can uh, put it again. In and progress. It's sensitive, it's sensitive to the capital. Take care that it should not be, for example, your yeah, caps lock should be off. State, it is a in progress. So you continue to the last attempt. I'm trying, then I create password. Let me check. It is incorrect. Have you entered or not now? Oh yeah, now I did. You went through. Okay, okay. Thank you. Continue.
przelecieć mojej żony za Harris, ale z ciekawości ile to powie? Świetnie. Posłuchaj. Zapraszam nas na weekend na jachcie. Mamy transport. Autobusem. Który jedzie do uroczej wioski Sandryki, gdzie pokażą nam jak sezon było szybki. Wyjaśnię się to. Śmiało. Będziemy odwiedzać europejskie porty. Jeść świeże ryby i pić wino. Będzie miało. Miło. Mamy pokażę. Mamy memoriz. Zgadzam się. O mój było to być pieczęte, pamiętacie? Możemy pogadać? Jasne. Zajmę.
All right, bye guys. Bye bye, Professor. Goodbye, have a good week. All right, Professor, you have a good night. Bye, good afternoon. <laughs>